from a surgery, something like that? Uh, out of the uh, out of the 16 cases, we had 17 objects. One of the 17 objects was uh, a very expensive piece of glass. Uh, the reason I say expensive was it wasn't expensive uh, when the person stepped on it, but it was expensive to do the analysis. To pull it out, yeah. Well, to take it out and analyze it yeah. because it had properties of both glass and crystal. But it's only been one out of 17 objects that didn't have any scientific interest. Now, that's, you know, an unbelievable statistic. So I, part of that, I believe, is the uh, the effort that we make to investigate these cases before we ever do a surgery. Give me your overall perspective on what you think these are and why they're in people. Well, I think uh, from what we've learned so far, and I'll go into certainly more detail later, but uh, I think sure. they're communication, electronic, and let's put it this way, extremely advanced communication, electronic communication devices, uh, which are uh, relating information uh, to uh, someone somewhere that probably put them in, and it has something to do with the function of the human body probably down to the DNA. Is the information about the specifics of the person that's carrying the implant, or is it about their environment? What are they sending back? Well, we haven't deciphered the information. We haven't gotten there yet. Uh, that's going to be one of the, you know, we found that a certain number of these objects are putting out radio waves. And in one of the cases, uh, we find that this is a radio wave in the FM band, and I got a secure uh, chart from the FCC through uh, someone who I can't mention, but uh, it turned out to be a deep space fixed or mobile uh, uh communication frequency now it brings the question in mind you know why would an advanced civilization use a radio wave for anything like uh uncle stan friedman says uh you know a silly effort to investigate uh, you know an advanced civilization is not going to be operating with a radio wave so that uh, only believes lets, lets me believe that, that perhaps somebody else is piggybacking or, or listening to this uh, same information believes that we're being genetically altered for a planet takeover. you agree with that? Uh, I, in part, I, I agree, only in part. I think, number one, there may be uh, numerous uh, uh, advanced entities that are visiting this planet, and they may have uh, different agendas. Uh, David Jacobs, uh, I've discussed this with him before, and uh, in relation to a hybrid program, I think there may be a group that is making hybrids, uh, for what purpose, I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's in conjunction with another group that's uh, genetically manipulating the human race. What if it didn't work? Set the stage for this story. Well, we've uh, gotten to the point uh, in looking at these objects that have been removed where we're looking uh, deep into the uh, into the metals, the things that... Uh, that put them together, they're the basic elements, and uh, we finally gotten down to maybe the the atomic structure of how they're put together and the, the high strangeness that uh, has occurred. And let me tell you, George, they're doing good science. Uh, you know, I've been at Lawrence Berkeley Labs, and I've been at Stanford, and I, I know what good science is. They're doing good science as best they can for a small group. And there is a, a report on my website that people should, who are interested in the subject should read. That's drkuntz.com, on a, a report on implants. So uh, I've investigated this very carefully, you know, George. Uh, if, uh, you know, I didn't take anything for granted. I, I investigated everything. I interviewed implantees. I analyzed the report by Steve Colburn. I analyzed a separate report by Dr. Russell Vernon Clark, which was also analyzed by Steve Colburn. And my conclusion is that this is most probably uh, extraterrestrial material being placed in human beings of import and perhaps common citizens as well. 
Say okay. that. We'll say that one more time, Bob. I want everybody to hear what you just said. You're a PhD. You're a nuclear physicist. Tell us again. What did you just say? It it appears to me that there uh, that there is an extraterrestrial civilization or in, in entities who are placing in individuals objects which we call implants, small uh, pieces of uh, iron, cobalt, nickel, and uh, with traces of iridium, uh, so like meteoric iron, and as they're placing it in, in, in the individuals in this country and perhaps around the world as well. And so uh, it's kind of astounding, but that's, uh, that's my conclusion. I think that other scientists, if they approach this honestly, they'd reach the same conclusion. <clears throat> what do you think they're doing? Why are they doing this, Bob? Well, I don't know exactly. It looks to me like this device, uh, uh, the one I analyzed uh, from Steve Colburn's report, is a, uh, I think it's a remote uh, listening device. It's, uh, it's a strange material. Uh, it's iron with cobalt with uh, nickel and traces of a large amount of iridium. iridium. Iridium is normally only found in meteorites. This is me- this looks like meteoric iron, but it's got a larger amount of iridium in it than and normally we'd find in a meteorite, and it's also got a surface coating on it that's very strange that appears to be sensitive to phonons, the sound. So it looks like the surface uh, is uh, it looks like it's a device that's des- designed to intercept sound waves and retransmit them. Oh, that's another thing. These uh, these objects emit electromagnetic radiation. Uh, you know, you can't, the ordinary piece of iron is not going to be emitting electromagnetic radiation. But these do, and they emit at a certain frequencies, scalar frequencies that I'm quite familiar with. 93 megahertz, for example, 15 megahertz, and on down. <clears throat> so, you know, they're emitting electromagnetic radiation. They appear to be programmed to absorb sound waves. I think they retransmit, but listen to this. This is incredible. Excuse my voice is breaking. <clears throat> they self you're, you're that excited, Bob, huh? Well, it, <laughs> this, this is extraordinary, George. You know, I've been doing science for 40 years, and I helped discover an important particle. I did some work on it, but anyhow, uh, they appear to self-organize. They, you break these implants up, George. Listen to this. They reassemble. Now, if you break them, today I broke a big magnet. A magnet will not, it will not reassemble, but these devices reassemble. Self-reassembly, that's, that's intelligent material. We're talking about intelligent uh, uh, programming intelligence into materials, Self, self-reassembly. There are car- carbon nanotubes in these devices, and Let, we don't find carbon nanotubes in nature. Let's, let's find out for a moment from Roger. Roger, how big are the devices, and where are they generally found? Well, the one consistent finding we have is that they are found usually superficially in the body, but yet near bone. So there's a lot of places that you can think of, you know, certainly uh, arms, uh, uh, toes, uh, fingers, uh, jaw, uh, a number of different places that meet that criteria. And I believe uh, they are placed there for uh, specific reasons. One of the reasons might to just simply be uh, if you're going to do these in mass and you want to uh, uh, get them done in a short period of time, this is an easy way to do it. Now, remember, uh, they have uh, no uh, visible signs of entry. There's no portal of entry. And this uh, self-organization, how in the world do they do that? I don't know. You know, if you break anything up, it generally doesn't reassemble. I mean, when was the last time you broke a glass and, and the glass reorganized itself and, and came back together? That doesn't, doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Well, I, I'm, I'm positive, 100% positive we're being visited by extraterrestrials and that some of them are putting uh, implants in people. Now, I took a photograph of a flying saucer. You know, that's what got me started in this. And the Byfield-Brown experiment, I know that that, uh, that proves anti-gravity. And John Hutchison's work proves it. And the Russians prove it. If someone, a scientist, want to visit my website and get clued in, you know, there is a scientific basis for this. Don't believe it, this idea that, that UFOs are nonsense. It's not true.